Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So about a month ago, I showed off an emulator called Taco 8, which plays Pico 8 games on the RG350. Now, Pico 8 is a fantasy console available on Windows and Mac that allows you to create and share different games, and it's a lot of fun to play with, and there are hundreds if not thousands of games available to experiment with. Now, the Taco 8 emulator just went through a recent update for the RG350, which allows you to use a different file type, which is much, much easier to acquire, and it just really opens up the whole world of Pico 8 uh, for this device and so I want to share with you just some of these updates and how to load it, how to install it, and why I like this app so much. So let's get started. So to get started you want to go to the developers web page and here you can read more about the Taco 8 uh, emulator but you can also go and just download the OPK directly. So you can go in here, you can even give this person a tip, I'd recommend you know tossing them a couple bucks, it's pretty awesome. Or you can just hit no thanks, take me to the downloads and you can download the app right then and there including sample games that the developer made as well. So pretty cool setup. So save this zip file and then you're going to want to unzip it. So open up whatever unzip utility that you use and then drag that over and you just want the OPK, it's all you need. Okay, so once you have that OPK, let's actually add it to your device. You can get rid of the zip file, you're not going to need it anymore. So open up your FTP client. I'm going to use WinSCP. If you don't know how to do this, just go ahead and, and check out the links I have below this video. I'll have all the guides linked and everything so you can, you can check that out yourself. So open up a connection to your RG350 using FTP. And then navigate to the Media Data Apps folder. And that's where you put any app, any emulator for your device. And then go back to your desktop or wherever you saved your uh, Taco 8 emulator. And then just drag it over. And I've already done it, so it's going to ask me to replace it. I'm just going to hit yes. Okay, and you've now installed Taco 8. But let me show you some other things. Let's show you how to actually access the games themselves. So Pico 8 has a home page, and here you can actually download and, and buy the system. It's a $15 system, and it allows you to not only to play games, but to develop games. And it's a lot of fun, and we'll get into that here in a minute. But you can also access the entire library, what they call it the Cartverse, of all these different games, which they call carts here. And so to access that, you actually just click on the Carts tab, pretty easy. And here you'll see just a listing of all of the newest carts that have been uploaded uh, over time. And so that you have access to just basically anything out there. Um, but you can also go to the featured section. And in the featured section, it's, it's kind of more of a curated list, like a best of, right? And here you'll find some really, really well-developed games of various genres. It's pretty awesome. So you, all you have to do is just click on a game. And then you can actually play it right then and there in your browser. And this will work like even if you're accessing it from your smartphone, you can actually play it on your smartphone too. So you just use the arrow keys and then the X and I think it's the Z um, buttons on your keyboard. And, and you can test out any game and play it for a minute and say, hey, I like this game or I don't. I really like this Night Ride game because it just feels a little bit like Spy Hunter, but it has like this cool kind of, you know, nighttime theme to it as well. And it's fun just to kind of dive into these new games and figure out if you like it and if it's going to be a good fit. And if if you do like it, then you just click on that little cart button or icon on the bottom left, and that'll open up this little picture. And this PNG file is the actual game. So all you have to do is right click and do save as, and you can rename it if you'd like to make it a little easier to find. So I'm just going to rename it here to Night Ride. And that's it. This PNG file is your game. And it's like something like 10K, maybe 14K, so a super tiny size, uh, but you've just downloaded a new game to play. So let's try it again with another game. So here's Masters of the Universe. We're going to boot it up. And look, it's even got like an intro screen. Like the, the kind of ingenuity that people use in these games is really kind of fun and, and just fun looking, you know. And so obviously this is a remake of the Barbarian game, the old PC game from back in the early 80s. And so it's kind of cool, you know, it's just got a little bit new skin on it. And obviously someone developed this from the ground up, which is really, really impressive too. So same thing here. If you're, if you're done playing it or whatever, you would just go and you click on that cart button. And then you right click and save this image. And same thing, you could just rename it. I'm going to just rename it Masters of the Universe. And so on and so forth. So you can just keep on doing this. However many games you find, you know, do a thousand, do ten, it's all up to you. And then you're going to want to go back into your FTP client to access your RG350 again. And you could actually just pull out the SD card and do this as well. But since we already have everything hooked up, let's just access it again. So now you just go to media, your SD card, and then your ROMs folder. And I already have a Pico 8 folder in here, uh, but if you don't, you would just add that in there. 
And you can see I just have a bunch of games here, just PNG files, super simple. And you can see I already have the Night Ride and the Master of the Universe in here, but if I didn't, I would just drag them over. Now, if you're using Simple Menu, these PNG files actually count as box art as well. So you could make a new folder, call it Media, and then drag all the same PNG files in there as well. So the game is also the picture. Like, how cool is that? You know what I mean? It's super easy, super simple. I don't think there's a more simple setup out there. So let me show you a couple tweaks if you're going to be using Simple Menu just while we're in here. Uh, go to the Home section, go to Simple Menu, the dot Simple Menu menu here, and then pull up the Section Groups, and then the Home Computers file. Now, if you've, you've never set up Simple Menu, I have a guide on my website. I'll link it below as well. But this is just a tweak in case you do have it. So all I want to point out here is you need to make sure you have a PNG file as a ROM extension there, or otherwise it won't recognize the files. And then obviously make sure that it's pointing to the right ROM directory as well as the, the correct OPK. And that's it. So save that off, and you've got yourself all set up. So let's move over to the RG350, and let's just actually move over to the Emulators tab and then we'll go to the taco wait. And that's it, here are your games right here. So let's open up the most popular of all of them, which is Celeste, which was originally developed on this system. And you can see here, it just boots up just fine. And this is just a perfect little uh, console for this system. You know, the, the two buttons work perfectly. There's only two buttons for every single game. There's nothing complicated about it. And it's just kind of fun to see what developers create with this amount of limitations, you know, really kind of cool. Okay, and to get out of it, you just hit start and then go down to quit. So let's look at it in simple menu and see how that looks compared to here in the regular menu. So just go over to applications, select simple menu, and I already have it set up to show uh, Pico 8, but you can see here that a lot of themes actually support Pico 8 and I have a theme here. And so let me show you a few games here. So I mentioned that it's fun to develop with this. So over the course of Labor Day weekend, I challenged my 11 year old son to develop a platform game and we were gonna compete. And so this is mine here, it's called Bear Me. And it's about a bear in the army and his name's Jeremy. And basically, as far as I got in the three days was to create the level, uh, to create the character, and then give him running and jump animations as well. So there's no enemies. I wanted him to like shoot bad guys, kind of like a Contra style game. I never got that far, but you can see here, it's just kind of fun. I made this in a weekend and I uploaded it to the Pico 8 website so you can actually grab it right off there and just look for Bear Me. My son made a game called Challenge Game, and now my son is 11 years old, right? And he just watched YouTube videos, and look at the game he created. You know, he has this little sprite here, which is modeled after him, and uh, he's yeah, he's got this whole level figured out, and he actually made an end boss, as you see here. So this is like his end boss, and you can't get past him. He like played around with like collision effects and made it so you can't get past him. But the kind of ingenious thing he did is that he made the clouds. Uh, he made them so that you can stand on them. So you go and you jump across all of these clouds and you can get past the bad guy. And it's kind of a little secret. He doesn't make it easy on you. These clouds are actually really hard to jump on because this character slides around so much. But look at that. He even made like a little cool end screen there. And uh, you can even jump on the words. Like how, how kind of cool is that? I'm just having a proud dad moment here. And you can even jump off into the abyss and die. Like it's just... I'm very proud, but anyway, so uh, it's kind of neat, right? We did that in a weekend, and you can imagine other things that people can create. So let me show you some of these cool games that I really like. So Allocation is one of my favorite, and this game is kind of like a Metroidvania game where you create these pipelines using these kind of different icons to create your map, which you see below, which opens up new rooms. And then when you get past these rooms, so for example, here's the first room, you know, you have this bad guy, you can either shoot him or just run past him. And then you get through this little maze part and now you're in the next destination. And as you get to this, you get new rooms, right? So then you go back to the first room and you know, you can kill this guy again or run back, whatever you want. These are all just gonna kind of regenerate themselves. You get back to this one and now you have new avenues to it to go to. So by the end of the game, you have traveled to all of those destinations on the bottom right using those little puzzle pieces. Pieces. And each of those rooms, you know, they get harder and harder and you can like avoid certain rooms by not using those icons, things like that. It's really kind of ingenious and one of my favorite games. It takes about 20 minutes to get through altogether, um, but it's a lot of fun. So this one's really neat as well, and it's called Combo Pool. And this one is, is a little bit of a puzzle game, but basically you're trying to shoot 
two of one color together and by doing that it creates a new color and then you make those new colors touch each other and you just keep going and keep going and you only shoot black balls so you want your black balls to hit other black balls so that they turn into gray balls and the gray balls will turn into white balls and then the white balls I think turn into red or orange balls and it's like it just keeps going and you get more and more points and you can fill up your whole screen with uh, all these different uh, icons and everything else it's just really kind of a neat uh, therapeutic kind of game it's really fun this one's cool too it reminds me of outrun you know back from the 80s and stuff i just find this so impressive that usually it's like one or maybe two people put together this game and 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 it's just kind of cool to see all the different things people are making with this very small microsystem here's a platformer that has like a little bit of a mystery element to it and has you know a little bit of like king's quest kind of narration feel to it too uh really kind of ingenious game and uh, it's just a great showcase to show you some of the cool things you can do on this platform So here's another one, and this is uh, this is basically like a breakout or Arkanoid game, and it's just kind of fun. Like you can see, it has a little like you can have difficulty levels in this one, so it'll actually give you a little bit of a force field at the bottom in case you miss the ball. Uh, just kind of little fun, neat things, and it's just so cool to to discover these games and then to load them onto your console if you like them. Here's one called Galactic Wars, and it's basically like a Galaga style uh, side-scrolling one, so a little bit more like Life Force or Gradius or something like that, and it has an upgrade system as well but it's so cool you know it's just these tiny little icons but they have some really cool effects in there here's another one and this is actually made by the developer of taco weight so the same person who made this emulator made this game as well and it's kind of fun and i think this is on the android app store as well so it's kind of cool so you can check it out for your phone too here's one called maze dog and it's about a dog that goes through a maze and you basically uh you know you just find these birds and you're supposed to find one bird per level and i think there's eight levels altogether. and uh you bark at these devices which create explosions and that's how you get past the level so how cool is that anyway it's just kind of cool to see these things pico racer is another one this reminds me of pole position uh weird one about this is that the car like moves super quickly across the road it's like it's like you, everything else is kind of a little slow-mo kind of feel you know that old early 80s kind of racing feel except for your car which just zips left and right you know but it's kind of a fun little take on that pico 8 tennis so this one uh was kind of developed i guess by somebody who was just messing around a bunch and decided he would make a tennis game out of it it's kind of fun it is kind of it's actually super hard to make sure you line up the the, the racket and everything but it's kind of cool and then Pico 8 Tetris is actually, it has all the elements I really love about a Tetris game. It has the instant drop, you know, which I think is always important. And on top of that, you can also uh, hold icons so you can, you can save bricks for later and stuff. And Pull Frog is one that's been recommended to me. And this one is basically, uh, you use your tongue to pull these falling blocks to line them up so that you can uh, advance in levels and stuff. And it's, it's really, it looks very simple, but it's actually kind of complicated and hard to play. But uh, I thought that one was pretty fun. Okay, that's it for this video. I really wanted to just show off this Pico 8 emulator, uh, which is called Taco 8, which is just really kind of cool, you know, and I really like this Pico 8 community just in the fact that you can kind of jump into it, try out other people's games. You can leave comments if you like their games and give them suggestions and feedback and stuff. It's just a really kind of neat way to get involved into a video game scene with no strings attached. And I really love the fact that you can just use these PNG files to load up onto your device makes it super simple as far as having box art and everything else. It's really a lot of fun. So let me know if you like this video. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you found it helpful for you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'm, I've been trying really hard to answer almost every question and comment that comes through. Uh, and I really appreciate your support. You know, we're at about almost one and a half thousand subscribers at this point, And I've only been around for a month. So it just feels like you guys are all joining me for this ride. And I really appreciate that. So without any further belaboring of the point here, I just wanted to say thank you. And we will see you next time. Happy gaming.